Hi, Virtue here. Um, I'm going to talk about another haunting. You will see eventually a painting that I did that of this haunting, but um, I think one of the things I want to say about this haunting was this is the first really big haunting I did in London. Of course, as I've said before, I never meant to do any of these hauntings. I didn't look for them, they found me. Um, and it's really funny because it's part of the culture shock that, uh, you know, got coming from Australia and, and moving to London. Part of the culture shock that I was experiencing was, of course, all of this sort of, you know, excessive dead and excessive hauntings. And, um, you know, this is the first one I really did struggle with and it just shocked me. It was also that being Australian, although the war in the 1940s did affect Australia, there was no bombing or no real death at or in Australia, it was sort of all outside Australia. So that was another culture shock of mine was that I was not used to sort of all of the, the bombing that happened in London and the death and the, the damage and things like that. And this was part of that. So it was also a culture shock for me for that. So this is about Bounds Green Underground Station. The station I use is Wood Green. It's on the Piccadilly line. Um, Going, heading into King's Cross, uh, Bounds Green is the next one up from me. It started off really subtly and I didn't really understand what was going on at all um, at the time because, you know, I'd been quite used to the tube. I'd been here for, I don't know, a year or so, I guess. Um, and I was quite used to travelling on the tube. It didn't worry me. I wasn't nervous about it. But... What started to happen is every time I went down the escalator at Woodgreen, I'd hit the station uh, platform and I'd suddenly start feeling really panicky. Now, you know, I know I can be, get a little bit uptight sometimes because of, you know, I have problems from my child abuse, but panicky is not really a thing, a thing I get that much anymore because, you know, I do this stuff with the dead. I've had a fairly, you know, eventful life. I, I, I tend to be quite a reasonable person these days and I couldn't figure out where this panic was coming from and it just kept developing but I just wasn't aware of what was actually happening and I thought I was just a bit stressed. You know you just ignore it and think yeah you're just being a stress head just ignore it. Um, but the funny thing is the further I got away from Woodgreen like by the time I got into King's Cross to change you know it's probably what seven stations away maybe, um, this, this panic had, had left me and I thought this is really weird because it just wasn't making sense. So anyway, I just didn't know what to think of it. Anyway, this kept going on and on and on and one day I went down and as soon as I hit that platform again in Woodgreen, I just, it's, it's like I walked through a wall of panic. And I stood there and it was like I could feel it. I started to really, it got so strong, I started to realise it wasn't me. Because I could feel myself being completely normal. And yet I could feel this, this other effect of this panic. I got on the train to, to go into King's Cross and I couldn't, I could barely control it. And I'm sitting there thinking, look, what's going on here? This is weird. So I started looking around a carriage because sometimes I pick up on people. You know, if I've got someone that near me that is panicking, I'll start feeling their panic. And I'm thinking, is anyone panicking in this? No, everyone looked completely calm. But the stupid thing was, before I went down to um, the station, I'd walked up and it was sort of spring and it was a lovely day and I, I was so relaxed. And it was just that getting to the, by the time I got down those escalators, my whole mood had changed. So I started to realise that something wasn't right. This was not me. Didn't really again think um, about it being haunting. I mean, I'm now completely different. I'm now aware all the time that I could be, you know, I could be attracting the dead or they could be trying to attach to me. I, I, I know that now, but at the time I wasn't so aware of it. And then suddenly it was like something just popped in my head the underground's haunted. And I went, oh no, it's a haunting, that's what's happening. And it suddenly, it all made sense. So I sort of, it made me feel a bit better actually, because I thought, right, it isn't you. 
you just have to sort this out. I was on my way to the office. Luckily, I was only working a few hours that day. So instead of going in and doing the work I did, was supposed to do, I went in and um, researched, and I researched the Piccadilly line. And I think it took me about 20 minutes, and I realised what was going on. Because what I found out is that on the Bounds Green Underground Station, in I think it was August 1940, um, the residents, some of the residents of Bounds Green, which was quite common, would come and sleep down on the underground when London was being bombed because it was safe. But somebody, or someone dropped some, something called an oil bomb on right on top of the Bounds Green station and there were, I think, 15 people killed and they were buried alive. And suddenly I realised what it was because I then remembered that a lot of the things that I had when I was sitting on the train was I had these sort of panic feelings of, I need to get off the train and get up, like leave the station, no matter what station I was at. I'd sort of have to fight this urge to get off at like Arsenal and go up and, and it suddenly, it made sense. I thought, oh this, oh, this must be what it is. So I sort of had to help with my, I had to get my spiritual help and ask them, can you please hang on to this because I just need to sort this out. Anyway, um, I sort of sat there and I was really distracted at work because although I wasn't really getting the effects, I was still getting it a little bit, but not, not a lot. I thought, what the hell am I going to do about this? I mean, I could see in the literature, that I, the research that I was doing, that there were actually around about 15 or 16. It was a bit... I kept getting 15 all the time. I, I just kept getting 15 in my head. Um, and I thought, I've got 15 bomb victims. And everything, the more I thought about it, sort of in those circumstances that were reasonably peaceful, the more it started to really make sense. You know, the, the having to get out of the train and up to stations. The panic, I mean, the panic just made sense. I don't think any of these people had moved on because I think they were just stuck in this panic of we've been buried alive. And it was really weird because it was like, I don't know why no one had done anything over all these years. I don't understand how these people had been forgotten. I know they're dead, but how no one else had sort of come across this. Anyway, on the way home, what I do is if I get stuck like that, as I said, I have a lot of spiritual help. I have a lot of things that help me with this, uh, especially since I've been to London because I need them. And they're very trusted. And what I do is I do what I call a walk and talk. So I left work early. I just snuck off because I can't deal with this. I need to deal with this situation I've got. Otherwise, it's you know, I, I've got to do something because it's it's just going to be too difficult to, to do anything until I actually put this to rest or cross them over or, you know, whatever. I mean, even at that stage, I wasn't really even sure what to do with it. So I sort of did a walk and talk and I had a discussion, which is not really a discussion, but sort of a, my hires and have, I have a very strange communication. It's been going on since I was a kid. I can barely even explain it to people. It's just weird but it works. And we, we sort of communicated about what to do. And it was their suggestion. Because I'm in, I was in central London, I have numerous ways I can get home. And I live out near Bounds Green um, in North London. So I chose a method of getting home, which is an overground, an overground train, but it starts off in the underground. So I thought, all right, I'm going to, I was, it was suggested take that train home and what you need to do is when you're on the train and you're calm, take them back on board, hold on to them. You, you know how to do it because I can. So that's what I did. I got on the train. Nobody on the train realised what I was doing. Um, but I let them attach themselves to me again and... I just had to keep talking to them. And I, I mean, I wasn't talking aloud. I don't do that. I do it in my head. But, you know, I kept saying to them, look, don't panic. It's okay. And I sort of just, it was almost like I was role-playing with them. 
it was almost that, that that's what I thought. Use your imagination. It's the only way to deal with this. Make out that you're almost like someone that's just discovered them and you're going to get them out of there. And that's what I sort of did in my head. I didn't speak to them individually, but I just kept playing this sort of story in my head of, I found you, I'm getting you out, I'm going to get you all up into the daylight, don't worry. The beauty of this train is it goes through the underground and that's what I kept playing on. We're in the underground, we're underground, we're going to go up into the light soon because it's the only thing I could think to do and it was suggested and it, it, it was the only thing I could I mean, I, I was just, it was just mind-blowing. It really was. So that's what I did. And I just kept them calm. I just kept saying, I know we're underground. We're going to be up in the light soon. And it comes out at Dry Drighton Park, I think it is, it comes out at. And it just shoots up out of the internet. And suddenly you're in the middle of, of virtually Bounds Green where these people lived. So as soon as it broke through the train, as soon as it went up onto the under, overground uh, route, I just started changing my whole scenario. And I said, I told you I'd get you out and here you go. And then I started telling them about things like, there's Alexander Palace out there. I kept saying, look, there's Ale Alexander Palace. I was talking about how it was a miserable day and it was raining and it's so typical of London and look over there, there's, you know, Bounds Green and there's, you know, this building and whatever else. I was just I was just really playing this sort of role playing imaginative game in my head. And as it happened, I could feel them. I could feel them all leaving. And I could just because you, you do, when you cross them over, you can actually feel them. You can feel them just take it's look it's not like they fly off, they don't, but you can feel them move. You can feel the energy pull away from you. And um I thought they'd all gone. I thought that's it, it's over. I went home and I was just, I was just stunned. I was absolutely stunned. I couldn't believe what I'd just been through because it's, it was such a culture shock. I don't know anything about this damn war. I don't know about bombing. I don't know about people being buried alive. And um, it was just amazing. And it took me... A couple of days to, to really sort of get my head around it. I still find it a little bit difficult to talk about because it was just such a powerful experience and such a quick experience, an experience of having to think on your feet. You know, because I couldn't go home and have 15 bomb victims attached to me while I'm trying to sleep of a night. I mean, it's ridiculous. Anyway, I thought that they're gone, okay? I thought they'd all gone. But, you know, again, I've learnt from this. I now make sure I go back and clear. I make sure that everything is clear because I learnt from this. What happened was about a year later, I'd been, because it, from this point on, the hauntings just got even wilder. I mean, they just got completely out of hand. I've never been through anything like London, ever. It's just been an absolute challenge if it's taught me anything I think my brain has sped up about 50 times faster than I normally think because that's what it does it just knocks you off your feet and you really have no other choice but just to figure it out I mean I'm so thankful that I've got such incredible spiritual help because I couldn't do it without them um, they've really supported me through the whole thing and sort of help me out when it's got a bit overwhelming, like Bounds Green, you know, sort of giving me the sort of solution because I couldn't have thought of that myself. That was a bit beyond me. I was just completely and utterly, fuck, you've got to be kidding. Um, but the funny thing is about a year, a year later, I'd been, oh, it was just one thing after another and it got to the point where I honestly felt like I was going to drop to my knees because it was just out of hand. It was just happening all the time. I'd come out of my office because I was working a full-time job at the time as well and I'd go and get a sandwich and I'd have a bloody dead person at me. It was just like, you know, F off and leave me alone. I mean, I've learnt, I've learnt since then, I've learnt how to get it under control. I've learnt how to take charge of it and I've learnt how to control it and how to make them and even threaten them. 
to leave me alone and you don't come near me until I, I say you can. And it has worked. It's got a lot calmer now and I've got a lot more control of it. But it's funny because I, I use a spiritual healer in London. He's absolutely wonderful. Um, and I went in and I sort of staggered in and said, David, please, I'm, I'm screwed. I've, you know, I've been basically up to my ass and dead people. Now, he knew nothing because I told him nothing about what I'd done uh, recently. Um, and he didn't know any of the hauntings because he never asks. He just sort of, he just clears it all and it's, um, you know, and I go out feeling about 300 times lighter. <laughs> so he did this healing and afterwards he sort of, you know, he does a bit of a, a, a re, uh, you know, a debrief and he has a bit of a talk about what he picked up. And one of the first things after we're sitting down afterwards, he says to me, Virtue, he said, did you do something with 1940s war victims? <laughs> and I just, no, I just nearly fell off the chair. I said, oh, no. And he said, yes. He said, when did you do that? I said, a year ago, because it's a year later. I said, why? And he said, you had two of them still stuck to you. And I thought, oh, David, you've got to be kidding. So he removed them. He passed them. He, he crossed them over for me. But, you know, again, that was the first really big haunting I'd done and I didn't realise that I really needed to go back and do a bit of a, you know, is everybody gone here? Um, I certainly learnt from that. I'm now a lot more careful. I use um, more ritual in, in, in a lot of the hauntings. I go, I, I, I'm adept, an incredible, incredibly good at um, doing bindings. Um, and stopping these things, you know, getting into my house. I mean, I've, I, I will tell other stories about I've had infestations in my house. It's just been incredible. I've had infestations in my office. Um, I now don't get that because I'm a lot more careful. But Bounds Green, I'm kind of glad I did it because I'm really glad that these people are at peace because that's a pretty horrific death. And although there's no time in the dead world, it's still is a horrible thing to think that, you know, dead or alive, these people are stuck in a mild state of absolute panic, as you could imagine being buried alive would be. So I'm glad they're free, and I'm not pissed off that two of them hung on for a year. They just should have spoken up <laughs> instead of just hanging there. But, you know, they weren't that bad. They didn't really cause me that many problems. Um, they were just very quiet. They were the quietest burial victims I've ever seen in my life. So that's another one of my tales of London hauntings. And that was my first big haunting. And now I've been back to Bounds Green and it is just peace and love, which is just wonderful. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm still working through. There's still quite a few of these hauntings that I'm going to talk about. And hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much again for listening. And bye for now.